Action Park Media. Get a mic check here, one, two, one, two, episode 49, no gruffs given. Get busy living or get busy dying, that's goddamn right. Morgan Freeman has read in Shawshank Redemption. Uh, one of the old one of the old boys. We got one of the old boys here today. Obi, what's your, uh, uh, Shane O'Brien, everybody, uh, what's your favorite movie? So I love Shawshank. That's just a coincidence. What a voice on Morgan Freeman, by the yeah. way. But I just watched Shawshank for the first time in years, about a month and a half ago. It's a good rewatch. I loved it. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you seen the clip floating around of uh, Patrick Mahomes and then they spliced it to Kenny Powers? No, I, I haven't, but I love Kenny Powers. <laughs> well, they sound <laughs> identical. You're going to love this clip. It's like one of the only times a meme has got me laughing. Kevin Connolly in the building. Kevin? A little uh, thought on Shawshank Redemption. You yeah. know, um, Red, Morgan Freeman's character, in the book, it was an Irish guy. So when Morgan wow. Freeman got the role, he just said, it'd be funny, let's just keep keep that line. He said, why do they call you Red? He said, maybe it's because I'm Irish. Ah, oh, there so we go. It, was, it became Morgan Freeman, and that's movie star shit right there. I just got <laughs> goosebumps. Could you imagine anyone not playing that part than him? No. We're not talking about the movie if, if, if yeah, he did Yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah. Probably his pinnacle role. You would say, right? At this point, I mean, it would be anybody's pinnacle role because I would say it's on most people's top ten. And if you're like the guy in that, right, it'd be pretty tough to beat. Oh, he, but he won the Oscar for um, Driving Miss Daisy, I think. Yeah. Possibly. Oh wow. Yeah. Which I don't know was, if I've ever seen that. I hate oh, to say that. Oh, yeah. you'll love that. Yeah, you'll be sleeping in 14 seconds. <laughs> no, you'll love it. I, I think Ob's a, a guy that likes a. Uh, he can stick with the longer payoff. He's uh, not a, you're not a Marvel guy, right? No, I'm not a Marvel guy. But do you think like in real prisons, there is a guy like Red? Do you think when you check in there, you scope it out and you're like, oh, yeah, this guy, let's, I need some smokes or whatever. <laughs> do you think there is those guys? How many times did you pack a bag, get on a plane and walk into a new dressing room and not know a single person and have to really kind of identify your future just by glancing around the room? It's uh, uh, right all, all the time, and it's funny. We, you know, we were talking about Ryan O'Reilly getting traded to the Leafs earlier, and when I, I signed a one year deal in in Colorado, tried to take a haircut, I went in there, didn't know anyone. I'm looking around this dressing room, and, and the guys that are playing the music, I'm like, fuck, this team sucks. These guys are nerds. <laughs> like, fuck is going on here? Then O'Reilly came down out of the gym with like a flat hat on and a sick shirt on, and I'm like, who's this O'Reilly kid? And yeah, I put some my morning jacket on. I'm like, boys, finally, I was trying to be the good guy, but I'm like, finally, boys, I got. I'm get... taking the fucking music. Yeah, and I put my morning jacket on, and I looked over at O'Reilly. He was like, bump, 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 bump. <laughs> so I'm like, let's go have some lunch, and the rest was history. And do you, did the rest of the guys come around? They did, and listen, Aves, I was never the guy that wanted to run the music because it's a lot of pressure, as you yeah, know, right? I really want no job. part of it, like, but it was so bad that I was like, come on, fellas. Like, yeah. we, it's got to start somewhere here. Yeah, like you can't play country music before an NHL game. You God, just no. can't, no. right? I'll give it to you in the mornings, especially, <laughs> especially after maybe More, a tough loss the night yeah. before where we're feeling kind of down. You want to yeah. throw some Garth Brooks on or whatever to get the boys kind of feeling good. Yeah. But God, no. And after 10 a.m., there should be no country in the NHL yeah. dressing room. Yeah, that is a rule. <laughs> Kevin, do you understand that rule? I get it. I'm, I'm just thinking Sean would have some like Sean would be always introducing. Oh, you got to hear this. New oh, band. it was a it was a battle for me because I like used to play. I used to play like Seager Ross, you know, 20 minutes before the game because it's got a very like if you played the Gladiator soundtrack, which doesn't really have a lot of words and you played it from start to beginning. There's a crescendo that, you know, you could get your head behind that and really kind of get into it. Yeah, I'm not pushing that. That's what I tried to do versus playing a ripper like uh, playing Holiday or, or one of uh, yeah. my morning jackets bangers. Yeah, it's a tough. Oh, you thing. wanted to go movie score, Speaking really of drive up some and, emotion and, and go the go the full <laughs> distance, like like so you get to the rink at uh, wh whatever. Well, were, were you a first bus guy or second bus guy? Uh, on the road, so I'm kind of changed. I, I, I was just, a, I was a first guy. You were. Eh? Yeah, I, yeah. I had you pegged as a second bus guy. No, eh? I'd be like, text James. What time's that second bus? Let's, <laughs> grab, let's grab a coffee before we get on that thing. <laughs> you know, I felt guilty about it because Holly was the fucking. This guy was a before the first bus. He was a always the first guy at the ring. You would never. No one ever beat Holly to the ring. Really? Yeah. I ever. wouldn't have bet that either. Right. Ever. 
Always the first I guy. I would have said you wouldn't beat him to the bar, but I would have not said the ring. That too. Yeah. But I mean, he would always stroll into the bar. He, he wasn't in a rush to get to the bar because he knew the bar wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> always the first guy at the rink. And I drove with him for the year that I lived with him. So it just kind of got ingrained. I always thought no matter what the fuck you're doing, if you're the first at the rink, you, you kind of have somebody, you're a little bit Teflon to a certain extent. Yeah. Like if I'm hung over and I roll in, but I'm still first and I'm going to be terrible in practice. I was here. I was ready. Yeah. Just didn't pan out. <laughs> you know? is it a little bit Puck of an, was bouncing. Is it a little bit of an eye roll? Like, oh, the hot shot here on the first bus. Like, does this feel like guys are trying too hard? To I mean, the first bus? I just didn't have enough to do before a game. Yeah. Like, I just didn't really, like, looking back, I probably should have had more of a routine and a more of a, than just grab a coffee in a heat pack and wait for the soccer game to start. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. to me, I'm like, <laughs> the more I got to think about the game wasn't good for me. Like, yeah. I was like, all right, national anthem, give me a sniffer. Let's go. Yeah. I was never really thinking about too much other than that. Yeah. Did you guys, like, uh, I, I'm wondering, because I, I don't really know, and I don't think I've ever asked anybody, but so when I played in Detroit, Toradol was like, I, I got introduced to Toradol as a uh, as a passenger because they would just look at me and go, no, like, dude, <laughs> when you got 400 games, we can talk about the Toradol, yeah. right? Or if we're in the third round of the playoffs, but I identified it and what they did all season long. So in Detroit, they got the tort all in the pill. So you come in before the game and every guy had a, a Gatorade cup in their stall and it would be their like cocktail. They also used to have this thing called Ultimate Orange, which was they banned it. It was like a, a Red Bull, but pre Red Bull. Yeah. So now when I got to, I guess, probably L.A., I tried to start sneaking it in a little bit. But but uh, they were tough out here to, when I got to New York. <laughs> It was like <laughs> part of the protocol, yeah. right? So for, I don't know, probably 50 games of the 82 games, I would start taking the, the tour at all pill. And then in the playoffs, in the playoffs from game one, it was a shot in the ass. Yeah. Like I, I got it and I was riding this thing the whole time. Did you ever play on a team that had that sort of, you know what? I, I never was a tortoise. Like, obviously, you know, my second year in Vancouver. You had Jovo. And, yeah, and I, had, I had Elaine Vino, so I, I got some shit, and Vino's like, you're fucking, I, you, I need you to lose fucking 10 pounds before playoffs. And I said, AV, I, I'm not going to be, you know, going end to end out there. Like, what's 10 pounds? Like, okay, I'll do it. So anyways, I lose fucking 12 pounds in two weeks. Second last game of the year. Remember that big fucker, Steve Bernier? Yeah, of course. I yeah. go in for a puck he that... Was, he was thick. Yeah, like, that 12 pounds on me, there's no way I lose this fucking battle. So I go in, and he hits me from behind, separate my shoulder going into the, the playoffs. Missed the playoffs. No, fuck no, but started game one shooting it up. So oh, you like did. the start of the playoffs and throughout the whole course of the two rounds, I was shooting it up the entire... So you know the power of I it. I know the power of it. And then you get home... <sighs> the worst is how about when you get up in the middle of the night to take a piss and it's you almost like, forget and you're like, oh, dude, I, I can I can I can tell you that feeling with such precision on the first time that it ever happened because you get out of bed thinking you still got the juice yeah. in you and you take a step that you shouldn't be taken. You should baby that step. I can remember that to to a day and. Don't even try and get a hard on. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I don't think I did. I think I think hey, during those times in Vancouver, I was trying to stay away from the broads during the playoffs. That was smart. that was the only time I was like, all right, I gotta maybe just, smart. Yeah. Shut it down. Shut it down. It was so easy in Vancouver that right. Night. That was what I gave up for the playoffs. Right. Then did we you won the shut round. it down though? Did you really shut it down? I I listen. I didn't drink during playoffs. I did not from the start of the. Let me correct myself. From the when the series started to where the series ended, <laughs> I did not have a drink. But when that series ended, like we won Game Six uh, against LA in LA, and by the time you know that next night in Vancouver, I had a shaker at my house. Yeah. And then once that was over, I well, you had out. two yeah. days off in between, yeah, three days exactly. off. You got to You got to clean. Let so Chelly, that was Chelly's rule. So Chelly, and he would say it the exact same way. I don't drink during the playoffs, <laughs> and he'd tell you that dead straight serious. Now, with the exception of three times. After the first round, after the second round, and after the third yeah. round, he goes out and gets fucking cross-eyed pinned before you start the the engine for the second round. I think that yeah. sounds fair. Yeah. yeah, and and the reason I did it was, Aves, as you know, like it's hard to win one round. Yeah. Like the farthest I got was to the second round. To win one round, to beat another team that is just as good as you, and when you match up, it's like fucking right. So we did it, boys. Yeah. Then you celebrate it, and then you get on back on track to, to yeah. the next one. But uh, you remember Brian Holweg? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holweg, after we beat uh, Atlanta one year, he got, I've never seen a man let his <laughs> hair down like this guy let it down. We were at the Beatrice Inn in New York City, which was uh, the hardest place to get into maybe 
like top five hardest places to ever get into in New York for a period of time. And we beat uh, Atlanta there, and I brought the whole entire team. And I, I think it was a Friday or Saturday night. This was like Hyde in the heyday, you know. Yeah, but the Rangers. Ooh, Hyde. Is this in Detroit? Or this is in New York. Oh, I was going to say, when the Rangers coming up a playoff series, there's a lot of city leeway. They're gonna oh, yeah, we were getting in. Trust me. Now, they weren't getting <laughs> in without me, but we were getting in, and we got in. And I saw these guys tear. I saw. I looked over at one point and like, you know, the Olsen twins and, and – uh, Kirsten Dunst and you know whatever that whole new yeah. they had never seen a display of fucking humans <laughs> act like these guys acted you know shirts yeah. off like oh yeah ties tied around their ears and their forehead <laughs> guzzling out of the bottle just and, and you know end of the season wait so Holly's like he didn't look like he did when he got in training camp <laughs> I can imagine I had that same I could say the same about me I would come into camp at a certain weight and then by the end of the year there was no chance that's what they uh, the, the guys in Detroit used to say about Marty LaPointe they'd be like at the start of the season Marty's towel would be so low you could see his pubic hair and by the by the end of at playoffs it'd be just underneath his 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 nipples you could throw that at me in there too and then <laughs> some, some road cities the towels aren't big enough right like you go into like i don't know it's nashville or whatever you're like fuck those towels are kind of tight <laughs> <laughs> like they kill you to buy a fucking nice restoration hardware towel for the boys but. yeah yeah uh we were looking at clips and uh i gotta tell you i said to Connolly, i was like i don't know if i've ever seen a guy who loved to come down to the other end of the bench for a melee more than you. OB. Yeah, I know. Like I know. it was, and, and in Vancouver, it was you. And then all of a sudden, Hordacek would feel you go by him. And then that was his green light to yeah. go. You well, loved getting into it right I, there, right? I did. There, so I actually got benched in the third period of that game. And I, and I was already on fume. I was already fuming at, at AV probably more than anything. And then I saw you down there and AV, and then Voros was chirping. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not just sitting here. I'm coming down. I'm coming. But what I forgot and how stupid I was is that I forgot that little nerd biscuit chicken parm Ray Ferraro yeah, was Ray in between Ferraro. us, right? Yep. I was like, so after I did it, I got to the room and, and right away the PR guy's like, what were you thinking? It's all over TSN. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. But you did it a lot, right? I did do it a lot. I did do it a lot. Yeah, I, I like to... I don't know. To me, it was I, I like to let other guys know, obviously, I'm there. Even on the bench, chirping. It kept, it kept me more in the game. Yep. And sometimes I felt like it kept... My teammates more involved. Some guys, you know, some guys are snoozing. You're like, come on, fella. Yeah, well, you're your you're front end, right? Yeah. There's always, I think on great teams, there's always tension between the back end and the front end. Yeah. Like, I think a, in, in a good way. Totally. In a, in a good way. Like the, it's always the forward's fault. Right. Yeah, but, and, fucking didn't have his guy. And we want you guys, like, to, to I, I, I guess it's not so much a two-way street, but it's, you know, we got to do our job to give you guys a fucking prayer. To do your job. Yeah. I mean, that's the reality. I just need it. you on the wall there. When I look up, I need you on the wall. Yeah. And you're always good on the walls. Yeah. 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 I don't I know if you watch NHL games nowadays, but this wall play is fucking embarrassing, man. I mean, these guys, they turn it over and turn it over and turn it over. It would drive me crazy. If I was a coach or a D, it would drive me crazy. Well, I, I don't know how some of them, it's, it's like, I guess it's just okay now. I right? know. Because they're going to get it back at a certain point or, you know, but, but you don't necessarily, here's the question. If Vic Hedman gets the puck, Guys find a way to get on the fucking wall. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorelli, Colton, yeah. Patty, whoever. You love, the, you love the lightning as much as I do. Maybe more, right? Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I just have been, I've been riding them hard. For, why do we love them? Because they play the right way. Yeah. They play the right way. That's it. No, your clips you always do are great, too, when you break down. And it's always like, they, they play the right way. They play the right way. They're going to be right there again because they play the right way on the walls. Or yep. They all play the right way in the D zone. Yep. They have Cooch and the boys that can score. I mean, to me, they look as good as anyone. Yep. I mean, and also think about, I, I've been preaching the Cooch train this year harder than ever. Okay, so McDavid, he's got, whatever, 100 points, uh, dry sidle. Third place in the league is Cooch. Yeah, I know. Cooch doesn't have another. I mean, Cooch makes his players better than McDavid makes the players around him better. That's my opinion. Wow. I'm you glad you caught yourself. That one. You're Let's say clip that, that one. Cooch didn't have anybody else out no, there. No, I, 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 know. Mean, I, I understand that. But, but what I'm saying is one significant individual player in the league, nobody makes the players better around them more than I think Cooch. And I, I, I agree. I, th I think I see what you're saying. Was McDavid plays at such a high pace? That like you can't like yeah he's gonna you're gonna get your points playing with Cooch can slow it down and you can play at Cooch's pace like he could be like hey oh here you go or whatever slow it down or McDavid's like one speed Cooch can buy that time to let you find that opening that that you know you he trusts Pointer to find that opening yeah. or Stammer whoever it is 
But he's not going 100. He can slow the game down. Exactly. That's he, what I love about him. Because everyone plays so fast now. I'm like, geez, just slow her down a bit. Even McKinnon, I saw. I mean, he got a couple of goals the other night. Uh, well, Patty Kane, same thing. Patty he Kane's can, playing he, like he wants to get traded now, huh? He can slow the game down. Yeah, Or I he's love decided it. to slow it down again. Yeah. I mean, he made that. They beat who? Uh, he got a they beat trick. the Leafs last night 4-3, and he I looked, almost bet it. It was minus like 300. But he looked they, dominating. Dominating. And the night before, they came back and beat Ottawa. They were down 3-1, and Kane had two in the third. Yeah. Where does he end up? Oh, man, great. I, I hope Vegas. I hope Vegas. I think if he goes to Vegas, you put him. I know he likes to play right wing. Put him on the left side with Jack Eichel, to me. Yeah. Seems like a good fit. Uh, Carolina, I think with them losing Pacioretty. To me, the Hurricanes, and this is them the last couple of years, like, Top to bottom, maybe the best complete team. They lack some swagger. They got Burns on the back end that has some swag. Pacioretty, I thought, although I used to want to kill him, I think Kane brings some swag to that team in Carolina. Swag and a game breaker. Yeah. A game breaker. Like yeah. a guy. They don't that, have that guy. No. Like Sebastian Oh, I love him. But game seven, is he really going to go out there and put the team on their back? Yeah. On his back? Okay. So let me ask you about the Leafs because. Uh, we made a joke in here a couple of weeks ago. I don't know. Somebody was piping off about how great the Leafs were. And I said, <laughs> let me tell you something. In my opinion, all right, when you got uh, uh, O'Reilly, what's his name? No. Factor, yeah, right. Uh, no, 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 the defenseman. I don't even Morgan know Morgan Riley. Morgan Riley is your number one D, and yeah. he just scored for the first time after the All-Star break. I know. I mean, I don't care how good your front end is. Yeah. All right? You look at every team over the last 20 years – Every team has at least one superstar staple on the back end. Hundred percent. I mean, Kachara could have been that for Boston in those Cup winning years. He was a superstar, oh, yeah. big time. right? Big time. Um, they Duncan had, Keith, Seabrook on those teams. Yep. Doughty for the Kings. Yeah, yep. you need that. Victor Hedman. Victor Hedman. Yeah, a guy yep. like Sergachev who has now come that in. That guy's and nasty now. Plays big minutes. Nasty. Makar. Makar's sick too. Although he's well with the car. I mean, the Avs to me once they get healthy, but. One thing about Morgan Riley, Aves is, and I think to me is, and you're right, I don't know if he's a number one legit guy, but God, he needs a right-handed D-man that can play with him. And to me, like, Matt Dumba's name's been floating around there. Like, I'm not saying Dumba's a fucking top pair either, but he's better than what they have. Right. Like, to me, if you give him a right-handed D-man that can make plays and they can use each other, it may help Morgan Riley. Is, is it that much of a, a small minutia detail for a defenseman, like not having another right-handed guy? I think... If you're a left-handed... I think if you're a left-handed guy that can move like Riley, that you can start hinging and he can get underneath and you can use each other, yeah, I think he would flourish. Right. Right. I think he would flourish. The the uh, the hinge game now is such an interesting. Uh, you you see the the top guys do it like McDavid always does it on the power play. He'll come out. He'll do that big loop outside the blue line, and then he'll come back in yeah. and attack. They, no one did that when we were playing. No, right? We we like even a, I'm thinking <laughs> about a Yarmir Yager power play, stationary, not a lot of movement except. Yeah he would all of a sudden decide to move and he would come off the wall and take a step. That's where he would be. That, that's his goal spot. Yeah. Now, you don't even really play a specific position. If you do, you, you got a power play that's not going to work. No, I know. And when I think of like old school power plays, and you know this more than anyone, is the Red Wings back in the day, yeah. right? You had Holstrom just standing in front of the net. Yep. Listrom walked the line. Yep. Datsuk over here. It was yep. just stationary, but it was like unstoppable. Yeah. Well, they, the, the one thing that they still did was they moved the puck fast. Yeah. Now, some of these, pl like Tampa Bay, they move the puck fast, but they're also all moving. Yeah. It's really changed to an interesting. That part of the game is great. That part of the game is great. The hits, oh, I you know, they just don't hit anymore. I know it's I, crazy. I guess they don't hit anymore. It's crazy. And and I said, <clears throat> I said this last week that, you know, a big hit now, Truba from the Rangers. Every time he lays a big hit, someone comes flying in and fights him. And now, I get it. When we played, if someone hit our top players, your star players, you go after them. I get that. But not, like if if you were to hit me. There's, I'm not going to run in there and jump you because you hit me. Or if you hit Scotty Upshaw, no one's going to jump in there and fight you. It's a good, clean hit. Take your number, and I'll get you next shift. Yeah, I, So and, and that was funny. Like, Kadri, everyone was like, Kadri kind of – he did stutter step a little bit, like when he looked up and saw it was Truba. Like, maybe <laughs> yeah. I don't want that smoke. He was like, uh-oh. But I think he also took responsibility for putting his fucking head down and getting labeled. Totally. I mean, that's what I would have always just been like, dude, head down, fair play. You, I fucking got. I could get mad, take the number, and I'm going to try and run you later. Exactly. That's what I miss. Yeah. Like, fighting's one thing, right? Fighting, yeah. it's, it is. But I miss, like, I'm taking your number, 
And maybe I won't get you tonight, but I play you in three weeks, and I'm going to fucking get you then. Like, to me, that's what I miss. And in front of the net, Aves. I mean, you were great in front of the net. They put this stupid cross-checking rule in a couple years ago. It's because Connolly's boy, Mayfield, cross-checked Kucherov. Yeah. And they came out with a cross-checking rule. <laughs> yeah. And now there's no battles in front of the net. No. How do you do that as a defenseman? It's all about body positioning. I mean, they, they literally, when I watch games now, the co- I don't know what the coaches are telling them, but they just let them stand there. And, yeah, either you try to get a stick or, and, to and, me, it blows my mind. Like, I would the, never let anyone stand on top of the blue paint. Well, I listen, I remember, I remember the feeling of even a regular – I'm talking a regular season game in, in November. You know, a Saturday night game, you go into whoever it is. New York goes into Vancouver or L.A. We're in Vancouver. Sunday morning, dude, I'm going to feel like <laughs> shit yeah. Yeah, from yeah. getting cross-checked by Jovo all night or you or uh, Willie Mitchell or whoever, whatever fucking headhunter was out there yeah. just laying the lumber on you in front of the net. Yeah, like, and you, when you first came in the league, like, I had in my notes, I was told Red Wings, like, that era, like, that, that was, like, pre-lockout, right? Uh, Darian Hatcher. That, yeah, that was know, even gnarlier. That, like, our era, what we were through was pretty, pretty bad, but when you first came in the league, that was men – cross-checking each other and battling in front of the net. Like a guy like Yui Krupp. Like Yui yeah. Krupp, he wasn't a uh, big German guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy, he had so much girth and hands. When you got cross-checked by Yui, Yui Krupp, you fucking felt it. Yeah. Everybody. They were all, they were, Chelly. Dude, you couldn't go into a corner with Chelly and, and not think that you were going to, he was going to elbow you. He was going to – some part of his game was going to be illegal. Yeah. Scott Stevens will end, end, was the well, guy that would oh just end God. your career on any he'd given be, night. It could be over. He'd be kicked out of the league now. Yeah. I mean, if his hits, they'd kick him out of the league. Did you uh, – were you always a go-out-to-dinner guy on the road, or did you, did you ever order room service? I just, I'm just i laughing because I saw this clip yeah. from Shaq uh, talking about the NBA All-Star game in Salt Lake City. Yeah. He's like, I've never had so much room service in my life. Because <laughs> Barkley said – Salt Lake sucks. So yeah. It's boring here. Well, I played in the Myers in Salt Lake. The bars closed early there, and they oh, had yeah. some rules about, yeah. Oh, fine. that's a tough place to play in the Myers. Yeah, I actually had a funny story in the Myers. So we were playing. They were Phoenix's farm team. And it was my first year pro, and I slept in just for my, my nap. Not even out the night before. I just slept in. I was late. I was young. And the parking lot was two football fields wide, and Grant Fuhr was their goalie coach. So I'm running from the hotel to the rink. <laughs> and sure enough, Grant Fuhr's walking there. And I run, <laughs> I run by him. He's like, don't worry, kid. Could happen to anyone. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, thanks, Fuhrzy. I got to go. So, um, But to answer your question, no, I, I was never a big room service guy unless you know, it was Columbus or Carolina. But one, one, one thing I wasn't either, Aves – is I wasn't like, let's bring the whole team to dinner. Right. Right. Like, I had my guy. I yeah, had yeah. like Ryan O'Reilly, you know, in Vancouver. You know, it was guys like Alex Bold Duke. I had some guys on the road that I say, let's go have dinner. I wasn't like, let's bring eight guys on the road yeah. because it's I, too much. It's too much. And I didn't want everyone to really probably know what I was doing. And I don't know. I just wanted to keep my road life separate. Yeah. I, I don't know if that made me kind of a bad teammate, but I didn't want. I wasn't like, hey, boys, where's everyone going for dinner? I was like, boys, I'll see you at the rink tomorrow. So I was smart. What I did was I linked up with Hank, and that kind of yeah. gave me a green, uh, uh, the green card. Green, green means go. Yeah. Because Hank doesn't want to eat with anyone. So I got picked. Hank wanted to eat with me. So we would just – it was always, like, quick. We were in and out, table for two, never a problem to get a yeah. table. But I had the – you know, it was Hank. So nobody could say, oh, dude. They would say it because I wouldn't have gone to the dinners. I can't go to a – dinner with 10 guys yeah it takes forever fucking right? so long so long you're like i just want Jesus. my steak and get out and of here get like, back to the room exactly that's it or go somewhere else maybe after whatever whatever your whatever your thing is but yeah. so here the, the the problem is is that i played in la and new york i know so i never went out on the road because where was i gonna go that's true i know i know like in Na- i hate nashville with a passion <laughs> whenever we played in nashville guys love going to nashville yeah i had never went to a bar in nashville on a road trip you would like nashville now yeah but i know what you're saying when i even when i played in nashville i remember barry trotz the you know first thing he said to me is like the city's small i'm like yeah yeah sure it's small right fuck he wasn't lying by january i'm like if i hear another country song if you know i like it but now it's way bigger and you would right. like it now but to what you said, when I was in the league, Nashville wasn't a city that I circled as I'm going out there every night. Right. That was probably the place I'd go meet the boys for beers. Right. And maybe have something lined up and I'd be done. But Nashville wasn't like I'm going out there and getting pinned. So talk about your your uh, Madison Square Garden, New York City trips. What Was there always something on the books for always. New York? Never, never, never played. I, I don't I don't know if I ever played one not where I wasn't out the night before. Yeah. 
And I actually got a funny story. I, re- I ran into Ryan Malone of, or over the course of the All-Star Weekend in Florida. Bugsy. Bugsy. So yeah. Tampa was taking us to Prague for, remember the NHL premiere games? Yeah. We so, did, we went because we had Yager. Yeah. So we played, me and Bugsy just played three exhibition games out of the four. <laughs> so you know as a veteran, you think, fucking, no way. No yeah, way yeah, we're playing. Yeah, so yeah. we land in New York. I text the Razor, the, the equipment guy. I'm like, yo, are me and Bugsy in or what? Like, we need to fuck, because if not, <laughs> right. we got something ready to rock. Right. And Razor's like, I don't have, I got, you know, three lines and four deep. I don't have the whole team, but you're not on it so far. Right. Well, that was good enough for me and Bugsy. <laughs> and the next day was, not mat- was a matinee game. Oh. So we got home. We went to Marquee. Me and Bugsy got home at like... I want to say like six o'clock or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I Late woke up one. to a text at about nine o'clock saying, You're in, Obes. You and Bugs, you're in. So one o'clock game, no morning skate. No morning skate. We go down. I try to eat pregame. I can't even eat pregame. So so explain that. Normally on that, you would eat pregame and then maybe go back and, and lay down. Yeah. So it you would, would be you, an you, early you, breakfast. Yeah. You would just try to go down and get something in your system, right? So yeah. the game was at one. I found out I was playing at probably 8 o'clock, 8.30 or 9, somewhere in there. I went down, tried to eat, went back to lay down for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. I was in one, showered up, got on the second bus. I'm like, fucking walking up, <laughs> I'm walking up the hill to Madison Square Gardens, that right? I'm like, yeah. I can't even get up the hill. I'm like, this is going to be a tough one. I'm like, it's preseason. Just keep it simple. Yeah. Fucking no disrespect to Colton Orr. First shift, he oh. fucking takes me wide. I'm oh, like, yeah. I threw a couple pizzas. I was, it was as bad as I've ever felt out there. I mean, if Orzy takes you wide, enough said, right? Yeah, yeah. I I mean, felt, so the the best fourth line winger, toughest of all yeah. time. Love fucking Orzy, but if he takes you wide, you're having a slow night. Yeah, it was. It was. How was Bugsy out there? Bugsy was great. Yeah, I he, actually, he, I, I laughed about it with him a couple weeks ago. He kept it simple. Yeah, you know, as a winger, chipped it out, yeah. chipped it in. I think he might have even scored. Yeah, but his heart rate doesn't really go no. up or down too high, right? No, it doesn't. He was pretty even yeah. keeled. He was really even keeled. He's one of the best hungover players I've ever seen. Yeah. And that's like ultimate Coltman coming from me, and I think he would take it as that. Just played the same way every night. And you know, as anything, I tell people, like, consistency is the hardest part about the NHL. Yeah. Right? One night I could look like a top-four D-man, but if the next three or four I'm shit, I'm not going to be in the league. Yeah. Can you just be consistent? And Bugs use that. Yeah. Uh, talk about quickly just the the – experience in the minors because i had a fond memory the other day talking to a, an old friend you got 23 guys on the team everyone's under the age of 24 yeah. right yeah. some guys are millionaires guy everybody's got a couple of bucks in their pocket yeah we think we're rich at that time right yeah i mean you're getting enough <laughs> we just got out of kingston we're like fuck it right here we it, go it's it yeah. we're good yeah <laughs> how hard did you guys go in 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 wherever you played in the minors yeah so i turned pro in cincinnati and me too yeah i know i played yeah. the old cincinnati gardens yeah and uh so you were a couple of years behind me i was just behind you yeah so I when mean, so we so we destroyed that place yeah so you when you that when you were there it was detroit and anaheim yes. and then when i went there it was all it was just cincy then okay. then they went to grand rapids right um played the old gardens yeah uh what did you ever rig. go to the place to pachanko's over the kentucky river this place on sundays called uh, pachanko's abs- it, it was our spot we'd go every sunday absolutely i went over we went over to kentucky a lot yeah that's the only place we'd go out so there, there's cincinnati and, and kentucky are on the border but did they have the gambling boats back then they had the like the like the river gambling yeah, boats. Yeah, yeah yeah i never went on any of them but they were there yeah we we got into some deep we got into some uh <laughs> We got into some dangerous places over there. Yeah. Me, Ryan Barnes, Adam Delu. Ryan Jay, Barnes, eh? Jay Legault, uh, Tori Di Roberto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, fought Ryan Barnes, I think, when he was in Grand Rapids. Yeah, Barnes, he was tough. The other yeah. thing about Cincinnati and Kentucky, it, it's literally like crossing the street. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. It would be literally. Like here, the river's we're in not that big. Cincinnati, no. and the Beverly Center is Kentucky. Yeah. yeah it yeah. wasn't like. Hill, oh, we got to cross. You didn't cross. You went across the other side of the street. <laughs> yeah, you just jumped in the cab the or state you line. could walk yeah. across. But you, the rules you changed. You a pitching wedge over there. The rules changed pretty quickly when you went from Ohio to Kentucky. Yeah. You could get a, you get away with a lot over there. Um, what about when you went on the road? Did you ever play in Newfoundland? I never played in St. John's, buddy. I never fucking played there. It's cr- I've never even been there. And and Upshaw has a little Newfie in him. His, his parents are from there. And I'm dying to go to fucking George Street Festival. I never played there. But I heard it was the most epic trips ever. You never went to Fredericton or None of Cape that Breton? No. None of those? No. Co- wow. The only team that was in, those teams were gone by the time I got there. But St. John's was there. They were the Leafs farm team. Just by two years in Cincy, we didn't go there. And then my third year, I went to Portland, Maine, and the, and the team wasn't there. They moved to Edmonton or something, or Toronto, whatever the fuck they were called. Because those were, I remember those trips. Like, you know, we flew commercial from Cincinnati. Oh, buddy. <laughs> you know, played on, a, played on a Wednesday night, and now we're flying on Thursday, and we got a back-to-back 
in St. John's Friday, Saturday. That's a long flight commercial, okay? When you're not flying in the NHL, you're flying commercial on a plane with regular people, right? And you got a fucking minor hockey league, minor league pro team in the back of the plane. You know, then you get in there, and that's a long flight, and it's just a dangerous weekend. You got to fight <laughs> some. You, who knows who you got to fight? You got to fight both games. You go out both nights. Yeah. You know, guys would end up like a, in all different random places. You know, you go home, some Newfoundland girl, some guys, and, you know, who <laughs> knows the shit that the guys went into? But those trips were dangerous. They were dangerous. Um, there's the thing on the minors about the the fighting thing, and like to me, like I mean, you were undrafted, right? Yeah, I was eighth. I was eighth round pick. Like, I went to my first rookie tournament, and I was like, all right, I'm just as the only guy that I saw that I was like, wow, Lupo. When Lupo shot a puck, I was like, okay, I've never seen one do that. Yeah, but everybody else around here, the, I, they got nothing on me. And how many guys are willing to fight that aren't? You know, right. so that got me in the that got me into the American League. I started fighting, and then the lockout year. Without that year, I don't know if I make the NHL. But when it comes to fighting, we didn't have a heavyweight that year. It was me and Sheldon Brookbank. Yeah. And halfway through the season, we went to Casey Hankinson, and we're like, we need a guy. Yeah. Like, they had uh, Kip Brennan in Chicago, Jablonski in Milwaukee. Killer. Uh, Jeff Paul in San Antonio. Killer. It's just like, we can't continue to fucking. I can't fight Kip Brennan again. Like, I'm yeah. technically a prospect here. Well, so. Hordachuk was probably floating around down there somewhere. was somewhere. Yeah, the whole league. Fedoric was in Philly. It was yeah. just like, so. Killers. We went out, and, uh, we go to our captain, Casey Hankinson. We say, we need a tough guy. So, this guy in Chicago, Lee Jacobson, he's an attorney now. Lee Jacobson was working at a bar in Chicago that somebody knew, and we signed him. That's picked it? him up, picked him up, signed him on an American League deal. He came out. He couldn't really play the game very well, but he came out and fought the heavyweights for us for the rest of the year. Yeah. And it gave me and Billy a chance to like work on our skills and not have to like every pregame nap be like, fuck, here. Who, who's it going to be? My point being, that was the most stressful part about the American League, right. is having to fight these fucking meatheads that you're just like, Jesus, this is not fun. Did you ever have the luxury of playing with a guy by the name of Mike Scroy? I played against Scroisey. Scroisey scored a hat trick against us in Albany. In, and he in an AHL game? In an AHL game that Alexander Mogilny was playing in because Mogilny, <laughs> was, Mogilny was down in the minors <laughs> making 10 bananas. And I remember coming for warm-up and being like, fuck, there's Mogilny, six styles, tongues were perfect. Yeah. Anyways, Mike Scroisey scores a hat trick. He's crying on the bench, Aves. He's crying on the bench because he scored a hat trick. It was, I love Scroisey, but it was one of the most embarrassed i've ever been as a player yeah that he was just like he never thought he'd score a, a hat trick and he did against us i it, it makes me want to cry right now because <laughs> i know how how much that guy loves the game yeah. and loved the game and what a journey man but scroisey is out of his mind yeah always has been always will be you could put trevor gillies in that same yeah yeah well i mean Connolly, you you had the luxury of gillies in his prime new york islander days there was no one that raged harder he was a scary dude uh, scary those, Scary. Those, those pork chops. Dude. He was really like the first guy to have those pork chops too. About the duster. Or yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. long, the yeah. long side side duster. We played with th- we played with him in Portland, Maine, and we had a tough team. We had him, Kanopka, uh, Jordan Smith, who unfortunately lost his eye, but was an absolute killer. Nathan Saunders was a killer. Um, I, so anyways, we had a bunch of and, and I got to know Gills. And we'd be at the bar, and he'd be fucking fired up. And they'd be like, calm, go calm him down. I'm like, fuck you. You go calm him down. I'm not going to go over there. Yeah. Because he's going to punch me in the ribs. Yeah. He loves me, but he just, like, something would snap on him that there's, like, don't yeah. go anywhere near him. Yeah. Just leave him be. Where'd you play junior? I played junior in Kingston, and I got traded to St. Mike's. So so we both played in Kingston. I played for Larry Mavery just like you did. Stop it. Oh, yeah. You're kidding me. Mav? You had the luxury of playing for Mav? I had Mav? the luxury of playing for Mav. I didn't Mav. know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. For sure. I buddy. just got goosebumps. Yeah, me too, actually. So Larry Maverick was a perfect junior coach for me, Abe. So I grew up in Port Hope. You're a Toronto guy, right? Yeah. So Port Hope, Cons, is right in between Toronto and Kingston, basically, right? So I go up. I'm, I'm drafted fifth round of the fucking OHL. I have a pretty good year. And I, you, you're playing this game. You and Razor were playing this game. Go up and watch the game. Oh, wow. Meet Mav after the game. And Mav goes, you got any questions, kid? You got any, he's smoking a diary. He's like, you got any questions, kid? I said, at training camp, is there going to be any running tests? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Never seen anyone run across the ice, kid. Just show up with your gear. I was like, Dad, this might be my coach. This might be my fucking guy. Uh, the guy's the guy is a is a bull Durham. Like yeah. he, he is the he is the prototypical archetype of any great sports movie. There's a, a Larry Mavity. This guy wore cowboy boots. He was the he was the coach of the two teams for like forty years. Yeah. He called all the shots. He smoked on the bus. <laughs> he smoked on the bus cons. 
<laughs> I've heard Sean talk about. He it caught us before. in Belleville one night. Okay, um, <laughs> where were you, a little Texas? Or yeah, 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 yeah. You made the trip. You, you've done that. Trip, I've, I've yeah. done that trip. Yeah, yeah I've done that. It's trip. like a, it's like a forty-five minute. It's an hour drive. It's a forty-minute drive yeah. to a, uh, uh, yeah, which is crazy that we would do that because we were in Kingston, which was two universities and the bars there were out of control help me with the bar downtown in kingston the good one uh, what was it? stages yeah thank stages. you stages yeah. yeah and i had an nhl deal my last year of junior like That's i right i was getting paid i had an, uh, a junior salary of like twenty eight thousand dollars so every two weeks i would get checks from the detroit For, red Wings. That's... That was a salary. That cons to just put that in perspective. Twenty eight thousand dollars a junior would feel like two hundred eighty k easily. Like you would feel like, oh my god, here Easy. we go. You could buy a round of drinks for a hundred people for like yeah. sixty bucks, maybe. I mean, it, yeah, it, you know, most guys are making fifty bucks a week. Every two weeks or a week. Every uh, every, every week. Every yeah, week, yeah hundred bucks, bucks every two weeks. Yeah. I I uh, I used to put my car in neutral to save gas when I was in Owen Sound, <laughs> dude. I was so broke. You played the sound. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck around the same as the sound. Yeah. Yeah. People love it though. Brad Richardson loves it. I was with him a couple weeks ago at the Waste Management. Loved Dan, the one sound. Dan Snyder, Ryan Davis, Ryan Christie. Uh oh god. So man, in Kingston some... you played with Brett Cluche, right? Yeah. This guy, the... I love Cluch, but you want to talk about remember that old crusty dress room in Kingston? Yeah. Was I mean Cluch was great, but he he was hard on rookies, but I, he made me earn it. I love Brett Cluche to this day, but like just a mutant. Uh, the biggest mutant. He was my left <laughs> winger, and I think he scored 30 goals that year. He got drafted in the second round yeah, because Jersey. of the year that he had. I mean, he he was a he was like you you. Kluch was just too much of an animal. Yeah, he, he had good hands, just couldn't skate. Great hands, if couldn't you, skate. Like if you would play with a guy like you in junior, I could see how he got thirty because he has good hands. And like he's if you so give him a puck, tough, so tough, so tough. You hit him with a sledgehammer, he's not going down. Anyways, Mav catches us in uh, in in yeah. Belleville. All right, and he sends Brenda sends. Either her brother, Brenda was Mav's wife. Yeah, that's his wife. So they got the call, like, your guys are down here, and they're running fucking wild, right? <laughs> they're out of control. Okay, we had Kluch, God knows who else. Yeah. We had some wild guys. So before the night was over, we had even got out of there. Somebody was there and, and to tell us, Mav wants you back at the rink. So we're all shit-canned. Who knows who's sober at this point because we did some stupid shit in junior so we got to drive back to Kingston. He wants us at the rink right now. It's like, whatever, 2.45, 3.15 a.m. We come back to the <laughs> rink. <laughs> That's old school. We walk into the dressing room, you know, yeah, sit yeah, down. Yeah. Shitty room, fuck. He walks out of his office, walks out of the dressing room, locks the door from the outside, and goes home. And we spent the whole night in the dressing room. <laughs> He's he just a locked us in. The, he just locked. You, this is February in fucking Kingston. This arena is freezing. That old, I'm guessing that doesn't go over well in 2020. Oh, dude, you. The, this, I, 2022, you're out of Canadian hockey. You're you're oh, you're Graham James John. for doing that. Aves with the room, the dress room. I don't know if it's as wide as the studio, the old Kingston dress room, right? Not, not much. Not much. Like I remember, I walked in there, like you made the team. I'm like, fuck it, right? So you could, you could HL, reach like, across the other side, yeah. and, and and high five a guy. It was tiny. We were so cold, it. dude. I bet. And we were so scared. We were so scared. And that's the beauty of this. We were so fucking scared. And the next morning, he didn't come to the rink. What was the crazy uh, equipment guy there? Oh, fuck. I don't even know this guy's name. He just showed up, the, uh, let us out. I know his name. And Mav never said a word about it to us ever again. And, and you know what it did? <laughs> it scared us to death. And sometimes you can get scared and learn your fucking lesson. Big time. Because if he had picked up the call... Uh, the phone and called Ken Holland or or Devilano in 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 Detroit. I would have got my ass reamed. Yeah, like I would have, and and at that point I would have been thinking like maybe they just dumped me. Like yeah. there were consequences back then. Big time. You got in trouble. You you knew that there was only certain things. The the veterans kept rookies in line. Yeah, there was a pecking order and respect. Big time. I remember my first year pro. We were in uh, the Riverwalk in San Antonio. And I was underage, right? I fucking I, I moved to the states. I don't know that the drinking age is twenty one. So yeah. I got to call my buddy back home. I'm like, I need your fake ID again. It's fucking twenty one down here. Yeah. So anyways, long story short, Josh Gratt, Gratz, we're at the bar. He pulls this guy's glasses off and fucking <laughs> steps on him, smashes him. The bouncers fucking take him out and out they go. And I just like fuck. I better go out there and see what Gratz is doing. Yeah. So I go out there. Gratz is already gone, but these two cops are there. They're like, Hey, you get over here. Let's see your ID. Yeah. So what do I do? I give him my fake ID. Yeah. Boom, next thing I know, I'm fucking sitting in the handcuffs like this, and I'm thinking, 
you know, my career's over. Yeah. Like if they call fucking the I'm GM, the, I, this is it. It's yeah. over. I'm an eighth round pick. It's my first year pro. Like I think I was literally almost crying where yeah. I was like, but to your point, I got off. I learned my lesson. Yeah. And I moved on. But at that point, I was like, if they tell the GM right now, this could be over before it even gets going. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the, uh, I don't know. I just had this weird note. I want to finish with this because yeah. I think it's interesting. You know, we don't have papers anymore, right? Physical papers. So no kids have paper routes anymore, right? That's no no job. kids have the luxury of having a coach like Larry Mavity who can, you know, because you're not allowed to do anything anymore. You're not allowed to enforce or lean or police or uh, whatever the word is. Teach. You're only allowed to do it in a certain way. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Did you have a pa paper route? I had a paper route. My first ever job. There you go. Yeah. Paper route. Uh Hated it, but built built character, right? I had to get morning. out there and make sure those fucking 35, 40 papers were delivered. Right. As much 35, as did, 40 people waiting for those waiting papers. Waiting for the fucking Port Hope Evening Guide. <laughs> did they make it to the front step? I Maybe I just threw it on the fucking driveway. Kept, kept it grabbing. moving. Kept no, moving. I know what you're saying, Abe. There's, no, there's not really... Coaching is more X's and O's than like, I'm going to teach this kid a lesson than do A, B, C, D. Yeah. Saying, yeah. Right? Well, you, when, when you played for torts, right? Yeah. I love torts. But I when don't know John, how that's possible. I know. So when, but when John Tort, and listen, I had fuck you matches with Torts like face to face, right? Like, right, like, but for whatever reason, yeah, you guys just gelled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when John Tortorella comes out and says, you know, I, I can't, you know, hold guys accountable like I used to, and I'm thinking, why not Torts? Right. Why can't you? You know, he's coming there and rattle the cages a little bit, like the stuff he did with Kevin Hayes. I didn't like. Yeah. Like you don't scratch your number one. No. score. But why can't you hold everyone accountable like you did 10 years ago? So when he says that to me, it's like, fuck, what, what's happening to this game? Like, it yeah. should be accountability. It's the NHL. Yeah. So, you know, who? when I use the accountability story, it's like uh, it's like Scotty Bowman. Scotty Bowman would just find you at a certain moment and he would sit in the sauna with you alone. <laughs> I don't know how he ever knew, but whoever he needed to have a conversation with, like an accountability conversation, he would get in the sauna with you alone and then he would talk about absolutely nothing related to the accountability that he wanted to address but somehow you left that conversation convinced that there was a relationship between the craziness that he was talking yeah. and the accountability that he wanted you to start showing and those are the guys that i like yeah. you know those are the old they don't make them like they used to no and and you know we, we were talking about elaine vino and you know my stuff that happened in vancouver and it wasn't until my second year where you know i got shit where i came into a man-to-man -man had this conversation with them and I said to him after the conversation, I'm like, why didn't we have this conversation, you know, a, a year and a half ago when yeah. I first got, like, what took so long for me and you to sit in your office and talk, you know, now that I'm leaving here, it's, I'm finally like, all right, I kind of get what you're saying. Like there was no communication, right? you know, maybe I was not holding up my end of the bargain either, but my point being is the communication factor finally got, and we finished off strong. Like, yeah. It was just finally we talked man to man. Yeah. Yeah. They don't make them like they used to. Episode yeah. 49, no gruffs given. OB, thanks brother. Aves, anytime buddy. All right. We'll see you next week. Action Park Media.